Hey, Paul with Duet Outfitters. Uh, today, we're going to be tying the big fluff, little crawfish pattern we jig around in our local creeks. Uh, mainly tied in earth tones, been producing really well for us since about February. All right, we're going to start off with a size 4 Gamagachi B10S. Uh, typically only tie these in size 4, that's what I keep in my box, but I will vary the size of the dumbbell eyes we'll be tying on it uh, from you know mediums to larges. Uh, even tie some with just some lighter bead chain, depending on your water depth and the sink rate you're looking to achieve. Come in here with the old nib X and come in about a quarter inch, put you in maybe a 30 degree bend or so in there. Um, don't worry too much about breaking it. I've tied hundreds and hundreds and uh, I think I've only broke two B10S's bending them, so I'll take my chances. We're going to dress our hook with some Semper Fly 6 aught in black. Not real crucial on color. I try to keep the fly mostly earth tones and you can kind of tie it in with whatever you want. We're going to want to tie uh, part way down this hook shank because a lot of our material we're going to run down the hook shank a little bit to kind of keep it in that crawfish fight stance uh, sort of way. We are going to start out with some strong marabou. Just going to select a, a good piece in here. All right, we're going to go with a brown. And I'm going to do this about a shank and a half in length because this will be tied down the bend of the hook and that will eat up some of your length. Come down with it. Come back forward. Really lock that in. I'm going to come down the bend. Clip that out of the way. Finish it off, and I'm going to lay a thread base down to the hook eye. Okay, go ahead, tie in your dumbbell eyes. We're going to go with just a plain lead and a large for this one. Come in, lock these guys in, do a little figure eight. Around each eye, and then around the base. Make sure everything's pretty straight. Pull on. All right, advance back. About right there. A little more than midway. Come in with some flashaboo. Uh, we're gonna go with gold on this one, but feel free to use any color you want. Take two strands and you're gonna put them in kind of like you do rubber legs. Uh, I'll come in. I'm gonna set them just on the top, lock them in. Make sure you have them split apart. So essentially, it's two on it running down each side and run those right up to where you stopped with your marabou. Lock them in. All right, now we're going to advance our thread right up to the end, right there to that section, right up to the marabou and your flash. We're going to make a dubbing ball, something for the for the claws to splay out on. We're going to go with uh, Harris Ice Dub and Tan. You can use regular Ice Dub. This just builds up a pretty, pretty good dubbing ball. It's a little more dense with the rabbit in it. got to be neat about this Just dub up thread pretty thick and where you're just going to stack this completely on top of itself come in here wrap pull 
back. I'm gonna go even a little bit heavier on it. We'll add a little more. All right, tie right down in the back. Advance about a quarter inch back or so. Give us some room to tie in some rubber legs. We're going with the perfectly barred in amber uh, silly legs. I'm going to select two, tear those guys off. Come in here, I'm going to fold those in half, wrap my thread, set those legs just like I did with the flash. Right on the top. As I tie these in, I'm going to bring them down the sides and I'm going to keep them stretched. That just helps everything splay out so it doesn't just bunch together as you fish it. I'm going to tie that right up to that dubbing ball that we created. It's right up to the end. That's going to push them out the sides nicely and just really lock those in. Don't stretch too much because uh, you can break these silly legs off. Uh, for this one, we're going to use copper rabbit strips. Uh, just the plain rabbit strips. I don't use the magnums. Um, you can use micros. Zonker strips tend to be a little bit shorter hair, so I just prefer the cross cuts or just rabbit strips. Come in, tie the leather in toward the back. Really lock that piece of leather in there. We're going to be pulling on it pretty good when we start palmering, so we want to make sure. All right, bring your thread back down right to your eyes. We're going to come around. We're going to palmer this rabbit strip. As we palmer, we're going to want to wrap that halfway back over itself the whole way. It's going to help build the ball, build the prof profile, and keep all those fibers pushed back. Careful not to trap your rubber legs like I almost just did. Try not to trap too much of the rabbit hair. Keep that leather stretch too as you palmer. That way it's tight. Alright, you want to palmer that all the way right up against those eyes. And we're going to lock that off with a few wraps. Come in here, cut that leather close. Try not to cut any excess hair. Get it out of your way. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. You always leave kind of a tag in on that uh, leather on the rabbit strip. I like to kind of capture that with some a few thread wraps. Just adds to the durability of the fly. This is something you're going to be smacking off of logs, smacking off of rocks, things like that. So really, really helps it to stay together. All right. Now we are going to throw a dubbing loop in. Right there at the back. Our dubbing loop tool in. This dubbing that we're going to use, I found in a discount bin at our local fly shop. I believe it's a Nature Spirit Peacock, but it has some, you know, some UV properties to it. I've been using it. I've got several packs. Probably be really sad when I run out of it and I can't find it because I haven't seen it anywhere else. But we're going to select a good little chunk of this stuff, about like so. We're going to stack it. Those ends lined up for the most part so that it all doesn't pull out when we brush out our dubbing loop. Bear too much, then not enough. Stick that in your loop. And we'll spread this out. It can be fairly sparse. Doesn't have to be really thick. You should be able to see through it. 
at its core. All right, spin it up. Be sure you get plenty of spins on it. Happens faster depending on what kind of dubbing loop tool you're using. Make sure you spin it well though because our next step here, we'll take a wire brush and we're gonna brush that dubbing loop out to bring those fibers out. And if you haven't spun it enough, you'll lose a lot of fibers here. You have a bunch of gaps in your loop. All right, uh, we're gonna polymer this. I'm not gonna use the rotary, rotary function. I guess it's easier to see that way. And we're gonna just really stack that up right there at the back behind those eyes. And once we get to our bare thread, we'll bring that to the front, wrap around our hook eye a little bit, and we'll finish everything right there at the hook eye, at the front of the eyes. Come in here, clip our loop out after we trapped it. Throw us some whip finishes. You can whip finish this. If you run out of room for some reason, if you're a little funky with your space management, you can always whip finish around one of the eyes, anything to kind of hold that in place. Come here, clip your thread off. Okay, come back in here with that wire brush, clean up everything, get that dubbing pushed out down the fly. Uh, so what that dubbing's gonna do at the end, it's gonna keep that slim profile and it gets wider as it comes to the front uh, kind of builds that tapered crawfish profile I'm gonna come in here with some UV just to keep everything durable a little loon thin UV fly finish all right come in here with the light cure everything up you can really see that dubbing Looks cool. All right. So now we're gonna cut our rubber legs and whatnot to size. We have to be careful when we do this that we don't stretch when we cut. If we stretch, we're gonna wind up with legs that are way back here. So we want them to be pretty well past this marabou. I wasn't quite as even when I put these legs in so we'll cut them to size. I want them to stick out past that marabou half inch or so. All right and we are finished so you should have a little crawfish pattern. Can you see that Jake? Yep. Uh, crawfish pattern rides hook point up great to fish around structure around logs drag over logs rocks um, time with the plain dumb, dumbbell eyes so that way we don't have to worry about paint chipping off not that it would matter if you tied them with a gold or anything earth toned um, but everything's kind of tied down that bend of the hook shank to where it kind of pulls those legs up and keeps a little curved profile to it that's the big fluff thank you